The Harpia eagle is a threatened species, but there are people who are watching over it. Many times, we have had to leave the ground to be at the top of things. In the Pantanal, the breeding colonies of the big waders are 30 meters above our heads. And that's where we went with our cameras. There, we were received with noise and friendliness by these families of Cabeza Secas, who wanted to meet you. Brazilian authorities treated us with friendliness and companionship. The members of the SIGs, of the Army of Manaus, were very happy, as were we, the day several jacarés regained their freedom before the close observation of our camera. We traveled with the federal police and the IBAMA through the streets of Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, exposing those who dealt in the illegal traffic of the natural heritage of the Brazilian people. Those days weren't easy. The illegal sale of animals is an important business, and a foreign camera is never welcome among the mafia. The wealth of the Amazon forest is also distributed among the mafia. We were able to see the face of the man who held the chainsaw. An injured tree fell too close. Its last lament was a big fright for us. It was not only our intention to make a pretty series. From the very start, it was our intention to share the pains of the Amazon. And none was as terrible as that of the natives that we interviewed in the midst of their struggle, a struggle for territory, dignity, and life itself. In the Cayuá village, we felt disgusted for belonging to the tribe that forces them to commit suicide. We saw too many children with lost gazes. Come look at it. The gold fever has not been cured yet in 21st century Brazil, and we've traveled through some of its narrow circuits. With our camera, we wanted to find out how the garimpeiros earn their living and where they lose their lives. From Poconé to Sierra Pelada, our team followed the gold trail. And as did the gold diggers, we only found cold and sweat. But there was always a hummingbird that could bring the shine back. With water and sugar, Juan Luis was able to get these jewels to look into the mirror of our cameras more than once. The Amazonian wildlife has been kind to us and has accepted us. Six months, nine men, and a lot of kilometers traveled step by step from Tabatinga to Marajo, always surrounded by creatures. <laughs> the Brazilian Amazonia, with all its splendor and whims, encouraging us and at the same time inviting us to leave with its malaria, its amoeba, and its uncontrollable geography.
Without leaving Brazil, a country that is 17 times bigger than Spain, one can travel distances as large as all of Europe. And that's what we've done in all kinds of aircraft. Unforgettable pilots like Walter or Fonseca made us land in incredible places with over 600 kilograms of filming material. Without them, this series would have been impossible. Major Dario took a great risk when he took us to the heart of the Xingu to interview a native chief who had been kidnapped by the Kayapo tribe when he was a child. It wasn't a very pleasant visit, but in spite of the prohibition, we were able to steal a few images of this mythical Indian, the Indian as white as a Swiss, Bemotide. That same day, we smoked a peace pipe with another woman integrated into the Kayapo culture, a black woman. She also had been kidnapped as a child. We had met our objective, to reveal one of the mysterious legends of the human condition that hovered over the humanized Amazonia. The new version of Little Big Man. In the Pantanal, thousands of kilometers away from the Cayapo and their liking for kidnapping, we shared moments with the Pantaneros in the Bahia Don Bosco Hacienda, and we willingly stood at the hooves of their horses. Without hurrying, but without dallying, we traveled in diverse manners, like on the island at the mouth of the Amazon River, Mosquito Island, where we went back in time to when the first European visitors arrived here. Aside from non-stop work, a television crew in our circumstances had to understand and make itself understood. We have interviewed over 50 people throughout our series. Frequently, a bit of acting direction was needed. Life is hard for these men. Their lives are threatened because they defend the lives of those who are threatened, the isolated Indians of the Habari River Valley. Thanks to their collaboration, it was easy to synthesize their work and just cause in a handful of images. We have tried to go unnoticed so as not to distort the tension with which they carry out their work and vigilance every day of the year when there are no cameras around following them. The men who work in the isolated Indians department of the Funai live separated from their families for months on end, as we do. And their objective, as is ours, is to bring good news to the world. There are still indigenous tribes in the Amazonia who have not established contact with the white man. Their cause is to impose a strict respect for human rights for the defenseless in this tormented land. And we would feel very proud if we have contributed to this with our work. Brazil is a beautiful country. And it has not been a difficult task to depict it as such with our cameras. The diversity of its landscapes doesn't need to stop by makeup. It just has to know how to be at the right place at the right time and move on. In addition, Israel and Carlos, our sound technicians, have listened so the rest of us could hear. In this wild nature, many can speak but are not always seen. Latimaraña has taken good care of the photography, but not too good care of himself. 
It was necessary to get down all the details of Dr. Zilka Campos's night work. And of course, there had to be good lighting. You know how attracted insects are to light contamination. That night, the crocodiles weren't the most dangerous creatures. Manuela is an important part of Sidney Pozuelos' team. We owe him the realization of this series and a great deal of his beloved Brazil's ethnological help. Sidney was a friend of ours before this project began, but is even more so now, after having accompanied him for months on his particular campaign. He directs Brazil's Department of Interior Affairs, in charge of avoiding the massacre of the isolated Indians by our society. Pozuelo is of flesh and blood, naturally. But for some strange reason, his nature makes him incombustible. All those of us who inhabit this planet Earth need him, including the Zoe. João Lobato is the man that Sidney has directing the indigenous fortress that protects them. No other white man has gained the confidence and respect of these people like he has. <coughs> With his valuable help, we were able to make the program dedicated to these human beings that captivated us from the very first moment. We became of age by their side and understood many things. Handmade happiness, custom fit to mankind. With surprising rules, such as not being able to bathe nude because we didn't have a little vegetable ribbon like theirs tied on to the foreskin. We don't quite understand their devotion for the poturu either, but they find themselves attractive with a burnished stick in their chins, and there's nothing more to say. We lived for over two months in their paradise, and were different people, without fake nostalgia, feeling proud of belonging to our world, but having enriched it with their lucid sense of understanding. The Zoe are warm and vulnerable, and our cameras have depicted them just as they are, so you could get to know them, and so that those who want to do away with their essence know that millions of people are here to defend them. Having met them is our best reward. And what have they gotten out of meeting us? All we can say is that after having lived together for a long period of time, we all came away with tears in our eyes. Two different tribes with one same heart, and this documentary is a tribute to such a profound meeting. While we were editing the material for this program, we received the news of the death of Arad. That little grandmother fell asleep one night in the same hammock we enjoyed her sweetness in. She died a natural death. She was over 80 years old. And we would give anything so that the rest of the members of her tribe could have that same death. I am on the last small Amazon island. Our journey ends here so you can enjoy this spectacle, the flowing of the river into the sea. That's why we'll be leaving you on this helicopter, so that you can enjoy yourselves as I have, in this wonder, in this marvelous place. This is quite a photograph to remember. Ciao.